Chapter 5. There she was. The pretty nurse Stephen had seen while he was visiting Bruce Lucent in the hospital. It had just been luck because he'd stepped out of Bruce's hospital room thinking about Bruce's ass. A nice tight ass. When he'd seen her. Her hospital uniform, so loose on some of the nurses, was tight on her. It highlighted her ass and her other assets, too. Even loose green scrubs couldn't hide those breasts, spraining at the fabric like they wanted to break free. Stephen licked his lips and rubbed his hands together. Women like his hands, they said, and men. He made more money than all of the other masseuses at the polo club. Tips from people who appreciated his hands. Dude, my hands are huge. Hey! He hissed and got her attention. She looked him up and down, taking in how his shirt strained over his sculptured abs, how the front of his tight jeans bulged, how his hair hung sexily over his eyes. She smiled. Those sexy eyes sparkled. Those rosy lips pouted. I saw you at the hospital, she said. You came to see Mr. Lucent. Excellent memory, he congratulated. He knew his smile lit up dark brown his eyes, accented his tanned cheekbones. Like the rest of you. She blushed and the warm rush of color colored her face and neck and on down into her cleavage. His eyes followed where it led and she saw him staring down her shirt. She seemed to like it. Buy me a drink. Bars this close to the hospital had people drinking to forget what horrible sicknesses their loved ones had been sitting in them. They weren't very good places to start romances. So after one drink, Stephen queried, Let's go somewhere else. This place is depressing. It's raining outside. She moved closer to him, like he could keep her warm in the rain. I'll keep you warm. He promised. I'd a lot rather get wet in here. That's what she wants to hear. She leaned closer on the bar stool. He looked around at the sad people with their drinks, but no one met his eyes, so he leaned down and played with a piece of her sleek brown hair. I'm Stephen, he explained. After a little while, when she didn't say anything. Do you ever try to forget things, Stephen? The sexy nurse asked him. All the time, but I didn't forget you. You are not forgettable. She turned her head around and smiled at him. That smile made her look younger, like she was a teenager. It was pretty with straight white teeth. She didn't wear much lipstick, but he liked it that way, probably for her job. I'm Margaret. I didn't forget you either. Even though it was days ago at the hospital, you are easy to remember. He smiled lazily at her, glad that he worked out because it must be his abs and his muscles that made him so easy to remember. Their faces got closer together. He was looking at her in the dim light from the bar, ignoring the jangling music. It was noisy in here and stank of beer and other things he didn't want to think about. So he thought about her. Looking down at her like this, her shirt gapped open more, and he could see the top of her bra. Those big jiggle breasts, so close to him, they were making his jeans uncomfortable. Let's forget what you want to a foggy then, Stephen encouraged. Say what? She smiled a little bit. And those rosy red lips parted, her teeth shone like perfect pearls in the dim light. <laughs> he wanted to taste those lips. She closed her eyes and tipped her head back some more. That was his cue, he could tell. So he pushed his lips against hers. Her lips were warm and soft and tasted like breath mints. It was good. She sighed a little bit and he thought she would pull away then, but she didn't. So he made the kiss better. He ran his tongue along those perfect teeth. The feeling made him more sure he wanted to get her out of this bar. This isn't a very good place to kiss, he stated. But it was a very good kiss. 
she exclaimed dreamily. He paid the bill, then put his sweater around Margaret's shoulders. Wait, her, he mentioned meaningfully. I'll bring my car around. His Miata, bright red like her lips, sparkled with raindrops like diamonds in the light from the street lights. Margaret giggled whilst he held the sweater over her head and led her out to the car. Climb in, fair princess, he chuckled, holding the door. Open. Soon that sexy nurse was sitting close to him on his sculpted dark blue velvet sofa. The lava lamp glowed on her face. Blues made her look mysterious. Reds shouted, Sex! Her eyes were deep pools of mystery. He put in a DVD that his last girlfriend had said was sexy. So sexy. The music filled the room with drum beats like heartbeats and a rhythm like to people humping. Let me give you a massage, he said. I give really good massages. I'm waiting. She turned her back to him and he laid his hands on that sexily slender neck. I need to pull your shirt up. Mm-hmm. He started to massage the tight muscles of her back. She was so tense, but he could fix that. A little oil, patchouli, down to her slender waist, then her voluptuous hips. Ease tension, and he could smell her reaction even over the oil. Yes, she was ready. He turned her over, massaged those breasts, D-cups at least, with his three-ented fingers. Did he take off her bra? Did she? And who undid her skirt? All he knew was that her muscles softened and her tension went away under his skilled fingers. And then her muscles tightened again as she pulled frantically at the zipper of his jeans. That was when he pushed his fingers into her yielding brown hair and pulled her face to his. Their tongues met like wild beasts, their dance ageless and timeless. You have a hell of a body, she exclaimed into his mouth. So do you, he moaned. Even if she was older than I, she was still hot. Oh. Her waves of passion set off Stevens, and her passion pumped him dry. She lay with her head on his chest, looking up into his eyes. The light from the lava lamp was purples and golds now. Purple and gold, the colors of passion. It shone on her face, damp with sweat from their wild sex. The purple made her glazed brown hair look like some exotic African princess, naked and willing. After a few minutes, he started again. Stephen was tired the next day, because he and Margaret had made love more than one time. First in the living room, then in the bedroom, then in the bathroom, in the shower. Then he took her home, and then they held hands like little kids and kissed outside her door. He couldn't remember any woman or boy as hot as she was. None of those teen ages had ever been like this. He defiantly wanted to see her again. He was giving a massage to one of the regulars at the polo club and a guy named Isaac Stevens. Stephen wasn't interested in Stevens. Not you, Stevens. Because the guy was too old. Besides that, he had Margaret on his mind. But he must have yawned one too many times. Late night last night, wondered Stevens. His voice was kind of muffled by the table he was lying face down on. Oh, yeah, Stephen muttered dreamily. He wished it was Margaret's back he was massaging right now, or maybe somebody else he could get a quickie in with. Thinking about Margaret was making Stephen hard. She must have been something, <laughs> Stevens guffawed wickedly. Or was it a he? It was a girl, no, a woman, not just any woman, the best I ever met.
enthused Stephen. Stephen's wriggled on the massage table. He was probably getting hot thinking about Stephen's night last night. Does she have a name or are you keeping her all to yourself? <laughs> you know those centerfolds of naughty nurses? I think they're all true. That's what she is, a nurse at the Atlanta General Hospital right across town. Stevens mused. Every time I went to the hospital, the nurses would hardly talk to me. Must be? Probably. Then you mean yes. But how? Yes. Well, not. I'm afraid so. What? Who knows? You think? Could be. But I know. She was. Yes. Stephen's mind was not on the conversation. It was on Margaret. He could tell she did like his abs and his ass the way she had gripped it. Well, does she have a name? Stephen said one more time. Oh, yes. Margaret Eastman. He drew the name Margaret out like a kiss. Margaret! Particularly break system BSE. His Miata, bright lit. <laughs>